Welcome back to the channel, guys. And you know this video is brought to you by Onyx Off-Road, and we are doing some epic stuff. Look at that snow wall. How about doing a Colorado Alpine Loop early in the year? Stay tuned for this. There's your gold nugget right there. Look at that. So we're just outside the town of Silverton, Colorado, and we are here doing the Alpine Loop. So this is going to be a great day, lots of fun. This is a beautiful day, blue skies and sunny. Got the Smoke Show S10 with the Smoke Show wife. This will be a good day. I went ahead and downloaded the Onyx Off-Road offline maps. That way we can track this whole thing and record what we're doing without needing phone service because I don't think we're gonna have it as we get up in the mountains. So a lot of people come out here to do the Alpine Loop and the trails surrounding it during the late, late summer. We're doing this at the very beginning of summer. We were told that the Alpine Loop is open, so we're gonna go find out for ourselves and see if it actually is. They have a machinery that goes up and opens it up and hopefully we can actually do this trail and do this entire loop and it is very early in the season. Odds of seeing snow, 100%. <laughs> Here's the Eureka Mill site, and you can see all of the old iron ore all around that place. So right now we're heading up County Road 2 of the Alpine Loop, which ultimately will take you up to Cinnamon, Engineer, even California Pass if you work your way the right way. Our goal today is to get up to Cinnamon Pass, run it into Lake City, and then come back over engineer on our way back up and do the entire Alpine loop. So even though we're gonna do the whole uh, Alpine loop, we're gonna shoot over here up California Gulch for just a second because I wanna show you guys the Animus Forks up here. It's a really cool old ghost town. This is the mining community of Animus Forks. It sits at 11,200 feet above sea level. The Animus Forks were actually built in 1873. The town site was platted in 1875, and by 1876, the community had 25 cabins, which included a hotel, a general store, a meat market, a saloon, a blacksmith shop, an office, a restaurant, a sawmill, and a smelter. So it was a, a pretty happening place. They even had a town newspaper called the Animus Forks Pioneer, which was published from 1882 to 1886. In 1891, a fire in the kitchen of the Kalamazoo house destroyed the hotel and 13 of the other buildings. So this right here is the William Duncan house, probably one of the most popular pictures of the Animus Forks sites here. And this place was actually owned by obviously William Duncan. And according to the history, he was one of the hard rock miners here. Now it's truly sad that they have to put this in here because people decide they want to throw their names on this wood. There's definitely worse views to have to look out to in the morning. Man, oh man. 
The floor is not very level. It's like a whoa. Really short door. Yeah. <laughs> that door is just a little shy of me. I am kind of surprised that these boards aren't peeled up. Old folklore says that old miners would keep their gold hidden in their floorboards, but <clears throat> I've seen a lot of floorboards ripped up and I've never seen any gold anywhere or any signs of anybody holding anything there. All right, Logan and Jacob, I'm disappointed. Well, the fireplace is right here. Yeah, I mean, like, but the... It just leaked out, yeah. The set leaked out. Yeah. So, one bedroom, two bedrooms, and then the stepkids' room. <laughs> Stepkid gets this room, because this is, like, maybe five by seven. Or they get this room, maybe. I think this one's smaller. This one, yeah, this one's, like, five by six. Yeah, yeah. I can touch. Yeah. By far one of the coolest spots here though. Here's a little fun nugget of knowledge for you. If you're ever looking for mines, if you like to go mine hunting like I do, if you have the Onyx Elite membership, you can actually look up all the mines because it's public knowledge where mines are and then you can go hunt them down. Another thing that helps you find them is you look up there. You can actually see that tailings pile, that light colored section. I'm trying to get my finger on it because it's hard to do that and aim this, but <laughs> That light colored section right there, that is a tailings pile. So I guarantee you right inside there at the top of it is a mine shaft. Oh, look at that view. This is a heck of a step. Ugh. That's a tall one. Now. Odds are high, there's plenty of asbestos left in here. Another short door. There's some cloth wallpaper still left here. That's pretty cool. Look at the, the leveling. Oh yeah, look at how level this floor is. <laughs> That's sweet. Oh gosh. You ever been to one of those like uh, mystic places where they say you can like roll the ball and it goes uphill? Oh, this would be one of those yeah, right here. I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Hey, this one, this one had indoor plumbing right there. Look at that, indoor plumbing. Ew. Even got a window. Oh, all right, climbing out the back side of here. Well, lots of tin, double layered shingles, really level looking floor, picked up off the ground. And they even got tongue and groove up in here. This was the architect. Whoever built this one knew what they were doing. Tall door, like normal size-ish door at least. I don't know if, it, if the microphone's picking it up, but you can actually hear all the water running. So it's just really pretty out here today. Visually and hearingly, I don't know how you'd say that. Audible? But all, all your senses, your audible senses, yes. All your senses are enjoying it. Gustavson, Gustav, Gustavson. Gustavson home. Charles and Alma. Ooh, they got. Ooh, from Finland. They dug up some stuff there from Finland. Wow. Look at this. See now there, that's where you'd hide gold. That could be a gold spot. It's good screwed down. Yeah, that gold's probably long gone. I'm not too worried about it. Oh, look at that. Old newspapers. Oh, the Denver Post. Anything with a date on it? 1907. 1907. 
This one had indoor plumbing too, I'm assuming. This was your outhouse and your outhouse view. You could open your door, wave to your neighbors. Hey. While you're trying to air out the bathroom. None of the wood-burning stoves are left. That's kind of shocking. Maybe they needed the tin or something for metal. So this house was owned by Connell Biggs. And in 1899, he was only 28 years old. He died in an avalanche. But this was his house. That's a heck of a fireplace. That's the first one that's still in here. Look at that. Look at the hinge work. You can see where they've done some work to try to keep this thing together. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Animus Forks. We're going to keep moving on and continue on our Alpine loop. So, the reason this area is called the Animus Forks is obviously because that's the Animus River. Now, when you think about the Animus River, you usually think about like Durango or someplace where it is really wide and really big. But when you're up here at this elevation, this is where the river is getting fed to, so they're fed from, so it's a lot smaller. And as it, as it collects, it continues to get bigger. So Animus Forks had, was a population of 114 people. But even though that that building back there was able to harbor 150 miners. So what that means is that they were designing it to, to continue their boom. Unfortunately, it never happened before they disappeared in history. So we just turned on to Cinnamon Pass and we are gonna run this thing all the way over to Lake City. And then on our way from Lake City, we're gonna go over Engineer on our way back. It's gonna be a nice Alpine loop. So we're definitely above tree line at this point. Tree line in Colorado is anywhere from 10.5 to 11.5. And they ain't no trees yet. No trees. Feet up. We just reached the summit of Cinnamon Pass. Look at that view. Dude's drunk. There we go. Snow level ingenuity at its finest. giant sticks Good Lord. they put these sticks on the t post so they know how deep the snow is and actually where the road is say that's a snow wall people the communities around here they actually operate heavy machinery that comes up and dozes out the snow so that they can get these trails open early as possible, which is kind of cool. And just as I suspected, even though we are the closest to the satellites, we have no phone service. Good thing I downloaded that map. So I heard a noise and my shock was off. I guess the bolt broke. So I'm gonna try to find something to put in here. At least that for now, I'm gonna tape it up.
All right, well, that's a half inch bolt. It must have came loose at some point. I mean, it's up top. I probably missed it and it got loose, but I got it kind of taped in there. I'm gonna keep an eye out. Maybe there'll be some old uh, bolts off some mining equipment or something floating around that I can take it off of and maybe get this shock held in with. I don't know if the camera caught that, but that was a marmot. The old whistle pig. So that mine was on private property. It was privately owned, and I am not gonna go walk around on it trying to hunt down a bolt. So we will go to the next mine. There's plenty of mines out here. See if I can, if we make it all the way to Lake City, then it'll work out too. Hopefully there'll be a bolt down there. say we're officially back inside tree line for sure. Some avalanche road work right there. This thing filled in way above the truck and wiped this whole road out, and then they cut it out so you could drive it again. We got a big horn sheep, guys. Hi, big boy. That was cool. That was really cool. You don't see that every day. So right behind me down here at the bottom of the valley, we're going to be coming into Lake City. That'll put us back on a regular road and then go into town. Hopefully I'll find that bolt, the actual bolt that I need, and then we can start driving up Engineer. That's one solid view. View 
can't tell, right behind me there in the brush are two moose. Just hanging out doing their thing. Probably one of the most dangerous animals, if not the most dangerous animal in my opinion, right there. city. So we are in luck. General store, super rad. They actually have bolts in the back corner with their fishing supplies and other things. And there's some kids here selling some lemonade. So I think Shanna and I are gonna get some lemonade while I change this bolt out. I am. You guys got some delicious lemonade? That salesman right there. <laughs> so they, people say it's the best they've ever had. Thank you. We'll do two if that's okay. okay. Let's try it. Oh, that is very good. It's not too sugary. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. It is. A secret recipe? Yeah, it runs in the family. Oh, a family secret recipe. Runs in the family. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Stay safe. Right on the road again. All right, so we had our couple minute break here in Lake City. It's a, probably a nice place to have lunch if you weren't working on your rig. Instead, we are gonna head up and do engineer now. So I'll show you where we go. That is definitely the restaurant. I can smell the food and it smells good. I'm kind of hungry. Right? <laughs> we brought some snacks and then we bought some peanuts and some other things too at the general store so so we can keep going and filming for you guys. It is June and they haven't opened up the roads to side-by-sides yet even though we're seeing lots of side-by-sides already and a lot of them probably shouldn't be where they're driving but once they're out, they're gonna fill up this place pretty quick. And we are officially on Engineer Pass. fact about me I absolutely love tubing down a river I'm not big on kayaks because well I'm tall so you flip over on a kayak and you get a stick in your eye but I've actually tubed this time of year on some of these waters and I almost died because running a tube at that kind of speed of water it's uh, it's not good don't do it don't do a cold that was bad wait until very very late summer water's a little warmer too it never really gets warm but it's a little warmer now what's cool is you see this old mine parts and then there is a mine shaft a lot of American history here that's really cool 
gold rush history. And my fried peanuts are delicious. I believe I'm pronouncing this right when I say it's the Ule Mine here. There's a massive dam and it is really cool. This place was built right around the 1900s. It's what fed Lake City. It's actually what made Lake City. And it even got so big that they actually brought in the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad to Lake City in 1889. <laughs> the timeline of this mine was started in 1871 with the first claim. And then in 1876, it recorded $125,000 worth of gold. And then it wasn't until 1874 to 1903 where it produced over $12 million worth of gold. That in today's numbers is over $280 million. In the 1800s, there was 250 to 300 miners working continuously on these gold and silver veins here. I'd say they ain't stopping much water. That doesn't look very sturdy. That should all have concrete. Everything is blown away. Is that a car? Yeah. The gate's nice. That's a nice gate. Do we trust it? And that's where it ends. Now we head back. <laughs> Give that a couple more winters and you won't be able to do that because that's going to be gone. A new, a new New Mexican, I like to put it together and make Christmas. <laughs> I like the green. Well, the road is just finally starting to get kind of rough. It was pretty graded up till this point. But now that we're getting close to tree line, uh, the road is not graded anymore. It's pretty much graded down below. And now it's actually pretty rough. And uh, oh wow, check this out. Pretty cool. A lot of waterfalls coming off all these low spots, all these fingers coming off the mountain. There's a lot of waterfalls. That was the Bonanza Empire Mine, which is pretty cool. Here's a fun fact for you about Bonanza. If you guys have ever heard of the Bonanza TV show, actually Haas, the guy that was Haas, was like one of the heaviest babies ever. He was like 16 pounds or something like that. One of the heaviest babies ever born. Um, I think he actually held the record when he was born in the US. That's a big boy. I was 10 pounds. I just saw a bunch of snow in a saddle in the Golconda mining complex, and so we're gonna drive over there and go check it out. It's up around there. I think we might be getting freshies on this trail.
Well, when I said I figured we had freshies, we definitely have freshies. There is a tree in the way here. I'm gonna try to drive over it on this side and see if we can break it. Maybe it'll snap and then we can drive. If not, then I'll winch it out of the way. Let me show you what took the brunt of it is my Barnes traction bar right here. So I built this ladder bar with Barnes parts. You can see it right there. And that's the exact reason why I built it like that. Number one is obviously to keep the axle from wrapping. Number two was to protect my drive shaft and know that if I have to bash something, it's going to be the first thing that I hit. And so that worked out. Wide enough for a vehicle now. I can tell you 100% for sure we have to be the first ones up here just looking at the snow that's still on the edges of the road here. So we'll keep working our way up, see how far we can get. farther up this trail we're gonna be able to get because it's looking really deep ahead but we'll get as far as we can and then we won't I don't know if you can see it but there's an epic waterfall right there that's cool all right, so we busted a bunch of drifts, but this one has me just a little nervous. This one goes out past the road, and I was already on the cliff edge a couple times. I was actually riding it because this thing was tipping me, and I just don't want to do this without a second rig if we had to get pulled backwards because now, as you can see, we're above tree line. I couldn't winch myself forward on a tree or anything like that, so... I think this is where we're gonna call it on this trail, but we're gonna go back and keep shooting up engineer. Even if we got past this and past there, right there looks completely impossible. And then it switches back and then goes up in there. And that's all just fully caked in snow still. But we do have a cool waterfall. Hey, and a cabin, a hidden cabin that you'd probably never notice otherwise, right down there. Well, let me see if I can get turned around here and we'll get we'll get on out of this. Well, coming back down the same trail means I get to cross this water again, which I'm not disappointed about that at all.
Now, do you think that is the summit or the false summit? Getting pretty snowy up here. This is prime. That is fantastic. You don't get too many shots like that. Look at the size of that. Wow. I think it was the real summit. Look at this. Mountains as far as I can see. Snow cat mountains. I believe that's called the Little Swiss Alps right there. Now we got another sticker sign. Gonna have to put one up high. And if you guys want this sticker or any of the merch, like hats, shirts, or anything else, we have them on the website, coldbuildsit.com. Oh. Perfect. Perfectly not perfect. <laughs> Yeah, that is awesome. Video will never do justice for what you're seeing. I lost the bet. Shannon and I bet. I figured that probably was the summit. She thought it was the false summit. I lost. I get a foot massage now. Man, we just turned the corner and it's more beautiful mountains. It was a big... So, so far, we've seen bighorn sheep, we've seen moose, we've seen elk, we've seen deer, and we've seen marmot. Uh, and obviously like chipmunks and squirrels and things like that too. But that's a pretty good list for a day of driving. Now granted, we're almost on mile 62 at this point, and that's like over double the Rubicon Trail, so we've been putting on some miles. with some snow. Oh, you stinker. <laughs> this is She got I snowballed. <laughs> it's down my pants. It's so cold. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> Go ahead.
All right, well, we got off of Engineer and got on to Mineral Creek. And now we're gonna work our way down to Mineral Point and see what it looks like. Hopefully everything's open the rest of the way down. I mean, we got over the pass. I am curious how Poughkeepsie is looking because Poughkeepsie is supposedly the hardest trail in the Alpine Loop. I just broke that snow drift back there, which means nobody has been up Mineral Point this year. So we're gonna try to work our way up and see what it looks like, see if we can even get up there. Now what I was doing in the other Colorado video where I got stuck was a pack and back. I was working my way up and then backing up, working my way up, backing up. But we ended up cutting out all that footage and just went to the very last one where I shot through and then it sunk. But I was making about five foot at a time and working my way and then that next five foot it just sunk down. So right here it started to sink. I stopped and now I'm going to go back up into it. Third time's a charm for sure. So what I got here is a huge drift covering the whole road. So what I'm doing is just working into it and just trying to flatten it out until I can get up and around it. We'll just keep working it. You know, I got trees, so if things get bad, I can always hook up a winch, but we're gonna just keep trying to get up here. I wanna get to the top of Mineral Creek or Mineral Point. to come up to this one and this sucker is just too deep and too steep and too wet i mean this is just soup and it's sinking but there's the top right there that's the top of mineral point so let's go up there and i'll show it to you real quick and then we'll work our way back down and get back on mineral creek Woo. yeah we almost almost had it so when you guys see this video somebody will probably be able to come up here there should be enough snow melted you might be able to bust this rest of this part out but just remember 
I loosen the jar for you. Now that's a heck of a boiler. Watch your footing. If you are walking around old mine sites and stuff, be real careful of nails. Hello. Hello. So there's that one there, and then that one there. Hello? All right. Well, even though I couldn't drive up to the top of Mineral Point, here's Mineral Point, and you can see why. Look at this. That's red. You think? Yeah. <laughs> I sank earlier. Twice. Ooh, almost sank again. Oh, almost sank again. Sank there. Yeah, all these discolorations you see in the hill are all mines. Hey, a raccoon, I think. I don't know if that's a raccoon up here. That's probably a marmot. Doing the marmot thing. Wet, wet, wet snow. Probably because of that. Whoa. There's your gold nugget right there. Look at that. <laughs> That's crystals in there. That's super cool. Somebody who's a geologist, let me know what that is. Ah, made it. Time to turn around and do it again. Right here is the San Juan Chief Mill. Look at this. Huh. So there's some tore up floorboards. Where's the gold? Mattress pads? Oh yeah. Hey, finally a wood burning stove that's still here. Well that's cool. So before I ever go upstairs, I always look downstairs and see how strong the boards look. So this one's uh, pretty neat. I'll just zip this up for you so you can see what's up here. There's Shanna. You can see all the hatchet marks. Oh, now that's awesome. Old school planing at its finest. Yeah. Does it have stairs to There is. Got for the raccoon living up there. As long as it's not a possum or golden. All right. Oh, yeah. None of this seems sturdy. El Cinco, El Floro not a bad place and it could be yours for just a mere two million dollars I mean you watch all the DIY how-to shows right fix this place up won't be nothing then you can put a container house next to it and a tiny home on the other side <laughs> is this a creek crossing path or is this just a creek path Feels actually better than it looks. There Shanna is, pumping her off-road sandals. 
She always likes to wear off-road sandals no matter what we're doing. They're awesome. Let's check out the mill, or what's left of it. This is one of those things why I love being able to video, take pictures of things that are still here because eventually this is going to be wiped out just because of natural disasters. I mean, just because of snow and rain and everything is just going to wipe this thing out eventually and people aren't going to be able to enjoy it the way we are. So I love being able to record and document stuff like this. See, and these things are going tink, tink. Those things are going chunk, chunk. So it's like tink, tink, chunk, chunk. Are these like pistons? Yeah. Tink, tink, chunk, chunk. And it chops up all them rocks. Tink, tink, chunk, chunk. Yep. In case you're wondering what sound it makes, it's that's it. Tink, tink, chunk, chunk. Some nice brickwork. These are your cedar hot tubs. There you go. You're gonna have to fix those too, but you know what? Just pull the wood out, throw some water in there. You'll be golden. Man, that is a lot of work. Look at all those. And look at the epic location they did it next to, right next to this creek, just running away. Stoke that fire. Quite the production. Yeah. Yeah, some of that's a little sketchy to walk on, but we can go this way, I think. So I'm betting they deferred water into here too. That's what these are for. That ladder's almost as nice as my ladder. My rungs are a little straighter though. All right, look at that. So at Mineral Point, up there where I showed you, they would dig up the ore, they'd bring it down here, they'd run it across this, Crunch it up, melt out the old gold, you know, all that gold mining stuff. I don't know, I'm not a gold miner. My grandpa was though. A gold miner in Cripple Creek, Colorado actually. That thing's seen better days. It's a drill. All right, we keep finding all these awesome side quests and the reality is you could spend a week out here checking all this stuff out and still not see everything. So that's just something to remember if you're planning a trip out this way, plan for a week, you know, have your rig and come out and plan to travel around for a week because there are a lot of trails out here. There's a lot of bonus trails out of here. You know, you have all the mainstream ones that get all the recognition, but ones like this, nobody runs those. So yeah, so you have a lot of, you just have a lot of bonus stuff that'll make it really awesome. And a lot of little extra credit things like these little buildings and little history nuggets all over the place out here. I have this. It's been waiting for me all day. It's been shook up. We're at altitude now. It's perfect. And maybe a couple more waters. I'd like those waters, please. One of the, you know the best trail snack? Coconutties. Those aren't called coconutties. They're my coconutties. I call them coconutties. <laughs> They're yummy. So even though they have opened up the Alpine Loop, I don't know if they've opened up Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie is right there behind me. So we might run up and take a look at it, see what we can do. If we can get up there, great. If we can't, we'll have to turn around and come down and finish up Engineer and head on into Ure. By the way, it's pronounced Ure. It looks like Ure, but it's your, and then like Canadian, A. You're a. That's my favorite place. Now coming down this has probably been some of the roughest stuff we've had yet. 
minus our little bonus stuff on the sides of the main trails but I don't know if I've ever done Poughkeepsie I probably did when I was like seven with my dad so I'm excited to get on it and see what we can do well I wanted to run Poughkeepsie but unfortunately it is still closed so even if the trail is open they have it closed till June 30th we we're here in the beginning of June I mean it, I don't know mid-June I guess but not here on June 30th so get they got the gate locked we can't run it I'll have to come back I'd actually like to do a comparison this trail first black bear and then we can see which one is actually tougher This is the Michael Breen Mine, and it was established in 1874. It consisted of seven claims, four of which were located by William Sherman and Frederick Pitkin, who actually ended up being the governor of Colorado in 1879 to 1883. Between the seven claims, the Michael Breen Group was productive for 93 years, and its operations ended in the 1980s. know what you'll find hiding in the trees. Could be Bigfoot. <laughs> that is rad. I gotta go stand in it. Okay. Oh yeah. Not even in it. It's full. Woo! It's full. Okay. That's full. That's enough. It's good for your nervous system. Yeah, Tucker and Trevor, you guys had to build yourselves a water thing. I just come up here. Cold water dunking thing. I'll just come up here and just stand in that. I don't know if I could sit in it for three minutes though. That is so cool. All right, we're coming up to the end of this trail. We have done the entire Alpine loop from one to the other and back. And we are coming into, really, we we're coming in really close to your A. And we have went 72 miles, almost eight hours of four wheeling. So when I pause it, when we would stop and go walk around, that's not being timed. So we've done eight hours of four, we've been out here all day. I wouldn't expect you to be able to do all this in one day. We were kind of cooking along. I think we were averaging about seven to 10 miles an hour on a lot of the stuff. So I would say definitely plan a couple days if you want to do the whole loop. Otherwise, you may not get to see it all or you just got to not care about your rig like me and just drive it fast. But either way, Why do you think they call Red Mountain Red? I'll make sure to add a link to this trail in the description down below. So if you guys have Onyx, you can watch it too and you can do it yourself. Also, don't forget if you guys want to get Onyx Elite and get all the cool discounts, you can use the code Colt Builds It and get 20% off of everything Onyx has. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye.